What's going on YouTube OCD for EDC here? What I've got for your face balls today. We're going to be talking about this little guy right here. This is the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza 31. It is a gorgeous knife. This one here happens to have a black micarta inlays and it's got an absolutely beautiful hollow grind on what is I'm pretty sure I think it's S35 VN but it doesn't say on it uh, it'll say in the uh, the box that came with it but I do not have the box so this was graciously loaned to me by my good buddy Zach over at Zach stuff if for some reason you guys are not following his channel go over and do that uh, he's got some fabulous content uh, anyway, this here is uh, a knife that I really adore, honestly. I, I really like the Sabenza. The only thing I really dislike about it is the shape of the thumb stud, as well as it only being a one-sided thumb stud. So, like the Nkosi, you get a double-sided thumb stud. Uh, I wish that you got... Uh, actually, I just wish they would uh, change up the design of the thumb stud altogether instead of it being this kind of pyramid shape. I wish they would do something more akin to like a Benchmade style. I just find that to be more comfortable. But that's neither here nor there. I'm not going to uh, bitch and complain about minor details like that. However, what we are going to do is hopefully improve this non-existent action. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Because I feel like there's probably a lot of you out there that have a Chris Reeve knife and would enjoy um, it operating a little bit better than that right there. Uh, these are wonderful knives that I really, really enjoy. But, you know, that isn't wonderful. So, we're going to tear into this thing and just get right into it. So, this is all uh, two millimeter hex on the hardware here let's see if we can just break this loose all right so from this direction i'm taking the whole pivot out so let's go this way and we'll just take the screw out we can get the screw sides to come out all on the same side that one had heavy loctite on it now i'm pretty confident that this knife has never been disassembled you'll see right here it still has the uh, lanyard bar in there which I'm going to remove that because it rattles. And you guys know that I've got a little OCD. And as far as I'm concerned, um, if you uh, don't have a lanyard in there anyway, then I would just pull that bar out. Um, now, just from an aesthetics purpose, obviously I'm not going to get rid of it. Uh, this isn't my knife. But I am going to pull that out for right now. Personally, I would anodize it and fix it so it cannot move or rattle in there. But we'll see if uh, Zach wants me to do that or not. Go ahead and pull that. All right. Got the pivot out. Again, bunch of Loctite on that guy. And that one is coming right out in a uh, collar on there. And there is our lanyard tube. And there we go. Okay, so you can see that this one was ultra dry. Um, did have a little bit of lube in there, but definitely very, very, very dry. We are going to remedy that situation. One of the things I actually or absolutely love about the Reeve knives is uh, these massive washers with the holes cut. You can see, I don't know how well you can see or not, but there's actually grime and junk built up in the holes right now. And that is how that's supposed to work. Uh, that's why that has the holes in there and then you have this washer on the lock bar side and because this is a uh, Sabenza 31 it has uh, the uh, ceramic detent ball that is playing the detent and locking the lock face as well uh, just like the Nkosi has which is a fantastic design We're going to get this old girl all cleaned up. Zach had told me that he actually won this. I'm pretty confident it came from one of Lou's uh, auctions, uh, which is super cool. And he won this knife uh, maybe six, eight months ago, something like that. 
and or maybe maybe it was a year ago i think he said that he won it right around the time the 31s were being released and he's just never really carried it chris reeve knives come with the fluorinated grease which is extremely thick uh, very very sticky grease with a lot of surface tension not really my favorite thing i just you know it's good quality grease however i'm just not a big fan of the way that you know it performs as far as the action of the knife you know it's going to work just fine as a lubricant but the surface tension of the fluorinated grease is such that it uh, is very very sticky we are going to improve it all right you can see there a pivot bushing which is absolutely beautiful i absolutely love the construction of the crk knives they're really second to none um, and that part is spectacular a couple q-tips here we're just gonna clean this area up make sure we don't have any gunk down in the detent hole and get the pivot bushing clean on the inside Oop, Q-tip coming apart there. Let me get my pivot holes clean on both scales. A little pro tip here. When you feel any washers like this will have, they'll have die tear on them when these were punched. And so one side you'll feel all the little edges from all the features that are in the washer. And so you want the smooth side going towards the blade, the side with the die tear, that side you're going to want uh, going towards your, your scales, or in this case, the frame sides or liners or, you know, whatever type of knife you have, you know, feel your washers, rub your fingers on them and, and just see which side is the, uh, the good side. All right. I'm just getting the washer all uh, cleaned up here and now that is ready to go in we'll get the uh the other washer cleaned up real quick there's the other washer all cleaned up and ready to go now this is the lube that we are going to use right here this is slick em all salve for edc gear we've got a really broad working temps here and what that means is is that the grease is going to hold its form it's not going to get any stiffer it's not going to get any runnier it's going to stay the same consistency from minus four. And actually, at this point, I've tested it to even higher than 175. It's actually about 225 is where it starts to loosen up and become a little bit thinner. Uh, but this is 100% made in the USA, actually made right in my kitchen. So you guys can pick this up over on the website. Comes with two different uh, applicators here. You've got this really long a flexible applicator that is very very tiny to get into all the nooks and crannies and then you get a hard plastic applicator uh, that is just more rigid so we'll go ahead and throw this in there first now I'm going to put a little bit actually Hopefully you guys will be able to see this. I'm going to go ahead and start to squeeze this up into the applicator there. And you should see it right there. It's going up. Now, once you have the applicator full, when you're done using it, you can just pull the plunger back and suck the grease right back out of the applicator. That way you don't waste any. Uh, having this in a syringe configuration uh, makes it very, very nice and easy to apply just the perfect amount that you want. You know, uh, the reason that I developed this was because I wanted a grease that would stay in place and not run. However, I also wanted it to have low enough surface tension that didn't have, you know, stickiness uh, with the blades. I tried and tried and tried to find something that would work and just flat out could not find anything. Uh, tried several different products and nothing was working. I just kind of took matters into my own hands and went out and made some. <laughs> so far, this stuff has way exceeded my expectations. Uh, it is absolutely fantastic lubricant and does exactly what I wanted it to which was stay in place, have very, very low surface tension, 
and give me the type of action that I'm looking for. And on this knife, I'm going to apply it a little bit liberally just because it has uh, all these holes in the washers. And so that's going to pull up a little bit of the grease. So on a bearing knife, you don't really uh, need to do that. Or <clears throat> on just a flat washer knife, you know, something like a, a bench made something with phosphor bronze washers like that. But also the Chris Reeve knife. Probably not something you're going to disassemble very often, be my guess. That's just my opinion. All right. You know what? I'm going to throw just a little bit more down in that right there on the detent hole, just so we have a little bit in there that'll continually get picked up by the bowl. All right. go I'm gonna go ahead and throw down some grease on here like I said I'm being a little more liberal with the grease on this knife than I normally would but that's just because of the nature of this knife All right. There we go. Get that guy in. Put the collar on. Now I am not putting that back in. So I'm just going to leave that out for right now just because I don't want to hear it rattling around. But like I said, this is not my knife. I will definitely put it back in before I send it back to Zach. Love the construction on the CRK knives. They're just, you know, meant to be maintenance, disassembled. And, you know, they send you all the tools to do so, which is fantastic. Everything is tapered screws with corresponding tapers on the actual titanium, which is beautiful. And you just bottom the screws out, tighten them up. Cannot argue with the quality of construction here. So let's get this worked in a little bit. And then we're going to see how we did here. <laughs> All right. So, you know, anytime you see a, a Chris Reeve uh, knife review, people say, oh, you know, it's a glassy action on and on and on. And all that's because of all the surface grinding that goes on in these knives, uh, you know, the size and diameter of the washers. Uh, you know, I've got a full... Uh, review and kind of breakdown of a Chris Reeve knife and why it costs what it does. Uh, like I said, this one here was a brand new uh, Chris Reeve knife and it is absolutely, uh, you know, not broken in yet or anything like that. Uh, but <clears throat> let's see here. Now, you know, it's not, it's still not going to be like a knife on bearings. However, there it is. Oh, okay. So if we, if we relieve the lock bar tension completely, um, this thing, yeah, will I feel like once this is broken in even more because this is such a brand new knife, uh, it'll be even better yet. Oh, yeah. If you relieve that lock bar tension, that blade falls all the way like that. Let's see. Yep. 
So definitely accent is greatly improved. Um, let me see if I can, oh yeah, flick it left-handed. You do have to give it just a little bit of wrist. Oop. Like so. You know, definitely at this point, it is a one-handed knife. Um, you know, and, and much easier to just flick it out there. Um, slick them all salve from yours truly. OCD for EDC. You can pick yours up on the website. It is in the uh, knife accessories uh, portion. I'll throw a link up in the description. We appreciate all your guys' support. Uh, I think you guys will be really excited. You can see here I've got just a little bit of lube sticking out the end there. And if I pull it back, it'll suck it right back in and clear out the uh, applicator. And each one of these syringes come with a little cap so you can store it like that and you've got you know this i've cleared this out too you just have a little bit of residue on the walls this is what you get in the package both applicators along with a hollow bag the stickers and it's up on the website available right now so if you want to uh, make sure that you have the best possible action uh, for you know, washer knives, bearing knives, a whole host of things that I've uh, used this lube on, and it has just been fantastic. It's pretty, uh, pretty amazing how well this works. This is already getting better. Look at the blade just fall. Uh, this thing just needs to have be worked in a little bit, be used and loved, you know. So, go pick you up some uh, slick em all salve for uh, EDC gear. And I am confident that you will not be disappointed. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Peace.